Hello, everybody. It's Tony Arnold here for Central Heights Baptist Church. Uh, just we're glad to be back, for one. Uh, Deborah and I were gone this past weekend. Uh, we took a group of youth to a place called CFAT, which stands for Service of Faith and Technology. We had a great time there. Uh, we did have some, some tough stuff, things there because a lot of what they do show you is, is what it's like uh, in a lot of these uh, developing countries. Uh, one time we called them third world, now we, we call them more developing countries. Uh, but um, it, a lot of them uh, don't have some of the same benefits that we do. So it does show us how blessed we are to live in the United States. But it also shows that we are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others, uh, be a blessing to people that are less fortunate than we are. Uh, so it was an awesome experience we had. Uh, we're going to try to have a slideshow uh, for, the, for, uh, for Sunday. So if you can, uh, be there and, and watch the slideshow with us, and we'll probably just put it online after that. But we're, we're excited to be able to show you more and, and, uh, and tell you more about that, too. Uh, we have some exciting things coming up here at the church. Uh, June the 25th. Uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., uh, we're going to be having a vacation Bible school here. It'll be camp out, so it'll be a one-night event, uh, but we're excited about that. Um, if your kids are, are uh, pre-K all the way through sixth grade, uh, they're more than welcome to come and join us. There'll be food, there'll be games, uh, and, and most importantly, uh, they'll be learning about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so if you haven't signed up to help for that, they probably still need some help. Uh, so let's make sure that we do, we do what we can to help them out. Uh, with that because it is a great opportunity for our young people uh, to learn uh, that they are valued and they're loved by their creator uh, and that there is a responsibility that we have to live for him if we believe all that about him is true. Uh, so we're excited about that. Um, we got the group of men going to a gridiron conference coming up. Uh, a lot of things going on at the church and it's good to see us so vibrant and, uh, and active. Uh, we did get to watch uh, the, the service uh, we got to go back over in the sanctuary this past Sunday since we couldn't be there. We did watch over Facebook, and uh, we're excited to see everybody kind of gathering back there. And we're excited to be a part of it uh, this weekend, uh, th uh, this Sunday, too. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we're actually going to go into the book of Genesis. I always start from the beginning uh, tonight. So let's go to the Lord in prayer before we do that. Uh, Father God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done for us, and most importantly, thank you for Jesus. Uh, thank you for the sacrifice you made for us. I thank you for the work that he's doing in us. And, uh, Father, just help us to be um, obedient to who we're called to be. Uh, Father, forgive us when we have it. And, Father, just uh, help us tonight as we read your word uh, that we'll know you more. And, uh, Father, that we'll learn something about you that we can take uh, to, to people so that they know that you're real, that you did speak everything into existence. You did suffer and die for your creation. And, uh, ultimately, you did uh, your son Jesus, he rose from the dead. He's going to come back again one day. Uh, so, Father, help us to be able to learn more about that tonight. And, uh, Father, be able to apply it the way we live and be able to share it with people uh, with, with our words. And we ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So we're going to be looking at Genesis uh, chapter 1. We're going to uh, kind of work our way through Genesis. And there's about 50 chapters in Genesis. It's a lengthy book. Uh, but um, I wanted to kind of go into the Old Testament. We've been in the New Testament for a while. I believe the entire Bible is God's holy word. And the entire Bible is speaking about who Jesus is. And we did a little sermon series a while back, and we covered a lot of these things. Uh, but we didn't cover all of, of what it was. So I wanted to kind of look into the Old Testament because it also shows us the nature of who God is. And it also shows us his mercy and his grace and his love. It doesn't just show us uh, an angry God in Genesis. Uh, we get to see a, a, a beautiful picture of who God truly is. So we're going to look in Genesis. We're going to stay in that uh, in that book for a while. Uh, there's some crazy, crazy stories in Genesis. It's a, it's a wild ride that we go on uh, working our way through that book. Uh, but we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about the creation. And uh, I'm big into uh, what we call apologetics, and it's defending our faith. So I'm going to share some of the apologetics, especially these first two weeks, of why we believe this is true, why that we believe that God created these things, and ultimately what we, what we think is so important. So let's look, look at Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was, form, was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. 
And God made the expanse and separated the waters uh, that were under the expanse from the waters and there were that they were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God, God saw that it was good. And God said, uh, Let the earth spout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which, is, in which it is their seed, each according to its kind of the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding, and according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which are seed, each according to its own kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be light in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let, there be, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the, and the stars. And God uh, set them in expanse of the heavens to give light to, on the earth, and rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the air across the expanse of the heavens, so God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which, with which the water swarm according to its kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living waters according to its kind, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock of, the, of all the earth, and over every creeping thing that, that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living creature that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding that is on the face of all the earth, and every uh, tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Uh, thus the heavens and the earth uh, were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work, uh, finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God restored from all his work that he had he had done in creation. Um, so we, we start to see the story, and God uh, basically speaks everything into existence. Uh, now, the way I see it, now I know we spoke it into existence, uh, but, but the way I, the way I you know, just kind of picture it in my head with him creating things is almost like watching someone uh, paint a picture. Uh, but he's not just using his hands to paint a picture. He can speak things into existence. And, uh, but, it, but it's cool kind of thinking about how he formed and created everything. And, and like when we see some creatures, we obviously understand. Like to me, a horse is a beautiful animal. It is uh, uh, the muscle definition. Uh, everything about a horse has just got this like uh, majestic quality to it because it's a horse. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of the way I always you know, thought about it. So I understood kind of where God was going with, uh, you know, with a horse. But I've seen some like creatures that live deep in the sea and like, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, but it shows how creative our God really is. And it shows what all was going on in his mind as he spoke these things into existence. Uh, one of the a friend of mine, we were talking about, um, you know, we, as guys, you know, we, we like to build things. Uh, and I've, I've always wanted to build things. I've said, you know, that I wanted to build, uh, build up my own car, one, you know, one day. Like, you know, do a total rebuild on an old muscle car or an old truck. 
uh, that I thought that'd be a cool thing to do one day. Uh, I built some furniture and stuff like that. I, I like to build, and he did too, and we are talking about that thing, uh, you know, about, about like how we like to build and why we like to build. And he said the reason he thought we like to build is because we were creating the image of God, and God is a creator. And we like to create too because that is like a, it's, it's a, it's something deep inside of us. It's a bond and, and a, a trait that we have from God himself that we like to create. We like to build things. We like to make something. Our trouble is a lot of times we do that for our own glory. And God creates for his own glory, but he's the one that's worthy of the glory. We're not. But anyways, uh, some of the things, that, the, the reason that I believe in creation, and I believe uh, in the Genesis uh, idea of creation is, is I believe it's not just an idea. I believe it's just stating what happened. And I know a lot of people question it. Did Moses really write Genesis? And is this really how it happened? Because uh, we don't have a scribe. Like a lot of what we reason we believe the New Testament to be true is because we have either scribes or firsthand accounts of Jesus. Um, the first, uh, you know, the, the last book that was written in the New Testament was probably written around 110 A.D. So a lot of these people were people that actually saw Jesus. Some of them physically saw him, were actually his disciples. But when we think about Genesis, there's nobody to record this. God is speaking it all into existence. But I trust the Genesis part of the Bible is true because I believe God laid it on their heart. And I believe he gave us his holy word. And if he gave us his holy word, we can trust that the whole creation started the way it tells us in the book of Genesis. And people argue over all the time about how long the earth has been here. I don't want to really argue over that because regardless if it's been here just a few thousand years or if it's been here longer, I believe God created it. I don't believe things just happen. So I believe the creation story is something that we can trust. A lot of the problems with evolution is just people believe that that we have evolved from a lesser being that, you know, well, ultimately happened because of some primordial ooze that um, things started developing from, uh, is where do all the basic qualities come from? Something has to start them. And in Genesis, it tells us that God spoke it into existence. So if God spoke it into existence, there's our start. And it gives us a higher being that can make it all happen. They can put it all together. And another problem with, with evolution is, they base it a lot off of, of Darwin. And, and Darwin, I believe in the Galapagos Islands, uh, he, he saw this, uh, I think it was a finch. It was some type of bird. And uh, the beak on the bird extended. It got bigger uh, because on that particular island, uh, it needed a longer beak to be able to eat uh, from some of the flowers and stuff that it ate from. So what Darwin, to me, what he actually witnessed was not evolution. It was adaptation. It was something very different. So I don't believe we've ever witnessed evolution. I, mean, I understand that the people saying it would take millions of years, it would be hard to witness, but I don't think we've witnessed something actually evolving. Um, if, if the evolution is true, then things should still be evolving. Uh, and I don't understand why we don't see things in different states of that evolution. Uh, is everything evolving at the exact same pace, the exact same rate? Uh, that would be uh, more of a, a kind of a miracle in and of itself uh, that everything would do that, uh, do it the same way. Um, and then the, one other thing that, that makes me question it is uh, the youth, the earth and the universe are, are bound by, by natural laws. Uh, we hold an axis around the sun, and it's, it's an imaginary axis as far as we don't have there's something you know, set that's holding us to this. Uh, besides what God, to me, set in place. Uh, when, when I build something, if, if it's going to, to rotate around something else, I have to attach it somehow or to have some kind of magnetic pull or something. I believe we do have that, but I believe because God spoke it into existence. And that, those natural laws that we see uh, are kind of proof that uh, of what God really did. Some other things, we're not going to get uh, very deep into any of this, is... Um, other problems we have are fossil records. Um, the, the fact that we got to solve that problem of where did it all start? Uh, how do we get life from non-life? Um, how do things, how do they reproduce? Uh, do they evolve into a state that they could reproduce and how do they survive long enough to get there? Uh, 
the complexity uh, of organisms, they say, where, that we came from from the beginning, uh, how do they come from such a basic element uh, that would start from an explosion? Uh, another way I look at it, too, is if God spoke everything into existence, then we would have uh, what would appear to be an explosion when you said, let there be, when God says, let there be light, and there's never been light, and all of a sudden the light switch comes on. That'd be like an explosion, right? Have you ever got up in the middle of the night and you had to go use the bathroom? So you go to the bathroom and you flip the light on. Uh, well, we put new lights not too long ago in our, our bathroom, and they're LED lights, so they're brighter than the lights uh, that were in there. And if you're going in there in the middle of the night, you've been asleep, and it's been dark, you flip that light on, and it's, oh, you can't hardly see. You know, it's, uh, it's, you kind of have to, you're disoriented for a minute because you're kind of getting used to that. So I think it would be like a big bang when God said, let there be light. Uh, but anyways, some of the things we, we can see by the order of creation is God was very specific in the way that he, he created it. Um, if we do get something uh, from nothing, so to say, but, but there is something to speak it into existence that has that power. Uh, so uh, the first part, he, he created light, uh, and he separated the light from the darkness. We don't have day and night yet. Not as we know it, but we do have light now. Uh, so what I would think is God created the sun. Uh, that would be the light uh, that, he, that he started, that he created. And the sun is just a big ball of fire, so it kind of exploded into existence after God spoke it to. Uh, then he separates the waters and the heavens on day two. Uh, and we can see that in verses 6 through 8. We see the, the light being separated in verses 3 through 5. Uh, in 9 through 13, he starts to he establish his dry land oceans, uh, subterranean waters, vegetation, and seed-bearing plants. So all the vegetation that we get to eat, uh, the trees we get to see, the, all that stuff is, was created then. On day four, we have the sun, moon, the stars, the seasons. Uh, it's the way that we can, we can kind of uh, count time. Um, what this also tells me, since we have seasons, and I'm not smart enough to understand all of this, uh, but if he's making seasons where we can count time, he always knew that we are going to sin. And because we're going to sin, and because our life would not be infinite, we would have a finite lifetime, God gave us a way to count time because he knew that we would live we would live for a short time and then we would die because he knew what we would do. But it shows how good he is that he would create us anyway. And he would still provide a way of salvation through his son Jesus. Uh, but anyways, um, in day five, the water creatures... Uh, so like fish, all the fish we can think of, uh, and then some of them are even mammals that, that uh, can swim and uh, live in the water, and, uh, and he created the birds. And on the day six, he created all the land animals, uh, and then he created uh, Adam and Eve, and they're the last part of his creation. Now, when we look at Genesis 2 next week, uh, people say that there's a two creation stories in there, and, and they take it as a discrepancy. I take it as one well, we're telling the story ultimately of Adam and Eve. It goes more in depth of how they were created and the special care that God took in creating them. It was a different, it, 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 he took special care, obviously, in creating all of the universe. But he took a very special care in creating humans. And it shows you how valued we are, how much we're loved. Uh, there's no way that we should ever be able to feel like we're not loved in this, uh, in this world when we think about how uh, what we see when we look at creation. Um, another reason that I believe that this is true is because uh, the order in our planet, the universe, is, uh, it gives us an idea that there had to be a divine or intelligent creator uh, to show us because of the way it was all formed. If you look at the way, uh, to me, when I look through and look at the evolutional theory, uh, the way that it tries to say that things were, came into existence I think follows the Genesis outline. I think they got it from there. They may not know it. They may not have intended for it even. But I think they got it ultimately from what God did. And we're trying to explain away what God himself did and what God himself created. Um, they said for, uh, I read this stat one time, and it was um, the, the probability that you would have to have for everything to come together, everything uh, would, would, you know, to be right, for us to have life and have it on this planet uh, the way we do. And it says there were 3,628,800 different ways uh, these numbers 
uh, that you could be arranged when you we start to think about that. Um, it's, um, and he said, if you created uh, flashcards, that, that's how many you would need to even start to come up with this probability that these scientists try to come up with, with, with all this ways that all this stuff could happen and, and be created. And the ultimate probability that you'd get to is you would have a one chance in 10 uh, to a hundred to the power of 158. Um, so that's 158 zeros after that 10. So, you know, it's not like winning the lottery. I mean, it's almost, it's next to nothing. The probability would have to happen for us to have what we have. And the reason I wanted to cover this in Genesis and cover the idea that we believe that it is all created, it's not something uh, that this, this garbage, this is something uh, that this is something that's actually true, is the Genesis creation story, or, or the account, is because I want us to understand how good and glorious and wonderful and, uh, and attentive of a God that we have. You know, sometimes we think because God didn't answer the prayers that we wanted him to answer, or he didn't answer the prayers the way that we wanted him to answer, that we have a God that just doesn't care. And sometimes we don't hear his voice. We have to remember between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there was a 400-year period where they said God was silent. I don't believe he was completely silent. He was at work. But when we think about it, you know, does God really care? If you start to look at things, if you really start to look at ways moved in your life, even through the tough parts of it, I promise you he's cared, and he's been very diligent, and he's been very attentive to even the small things. Things will start to work in that way. Or I can see how God's worked in my life. I'm a, a, a self-proclaimed idiot. I don't get it always right. I don't. I, there's plenty of times I fail. But God can use me. God can use you. He cares about you. He cares about you so much when we read through his creation. We see how much and deeply he cares about each and every one of us. We're all created in his image. So that's where I want to go. There's not a question for tonight. Usually I want to leave with some kind of question. But tonight I'm just going to give you this, that you are cared for by the creator of all things. He cares for you deeply. He cares for you so much. Because if you really, really read it, Genesis 1, it tells us, uh, we were created. Uh, we were created. Uh, God spoke to someone else and said, "We will create them in our likeness." He's talking about the Trinity, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the Son, being part of the Creator, would ultimately be given for us, so that we could know the Creator. We could know Him personally, and we get to talk to Him. There's plenty of things we get to do to Him. Uh, uh, there's one challenge I'll give you real quick, and then we're fixing to go. Uh, but but uh, not this past Sunday wasn't here, but the Sunday before, uh, we've been talking about the Acts 2 church and, and uh, some of the things about the Acts 2 church that made it special, the way God used it and moved. And uh, I've argued that this is the kind of church that we're called to be today. The same qualities are there. And I've challenged everybody to be praying for our church over the next 40 days. So I, I want to make sure that we continue that challenge. If you've missed today or something, start now. And for the next 40 days, let's make sure that we're covering our church in prayer uh, because we have this great God that we can go to that wants to know us personally, that would send his son for us. So we need to make sure that we make a big deal about him in this world and we proclaim his goodness for him. So whatever's going on in your life, I don't know. But I do know that you're loved and cared for because there's a God that spoke you into existence. We love you, we're praying for you, and we hope to see you soon.